It's a very well conceptualized program. So after Arjun's talk, we now come to those patients in whom a procedure called vertebroplasty is indicated. So basically the procedure is uh, it's injecting the cement into a fractured vertebra and the aim is to relieve the spinal pain uh, and thus restoring the patient's mobility. So a lot of these patients are in so much pain, their quality of life, their activities of daily living are significantly affected. So in those patients in whom, in spite of conservative management, the patients are in significant pain, they're not able to carry out their ADLs, then this is a very simple procedure which can you know, get them back on their feet immediately. So vertebroplasty eliminates the, the micro and the macro motion between the fracture site. So as Arjun rightly pointed out that the pain is mainly when the patients are trying to change their position and that is because of this micro motion at the fracture site. <coughs> And once we inject the cement, the cement has a thermal and a chemical neurolytic effect, so which also helps in reducing the pain which comes from these fracture sites. So indications are mainly pain secondary to a spinal fracture not getting better with conservative management, or if we start seeing a progressive collapse on the fracture. So initially when the patient comes in the clinic, you see that the height has collapsed say, around 80, just 20%, 80% is good. But at two weeks follow up on a standing x-ray, we are seeing that the height is collapsing further. Then we do the vertebroplasty to avoid further collapse. Or in patients where there is more than 50% collapse, where the chances of the sagittal alignment changing, the patient starts becoming kyphotic. And this is the, these are the procedure cases where we, uh, you know, we, the vertebroplasty is indicated at the earlier stage. And obviously for me, one of the most important indications is, is if it's affecting the patient's activity of daily living and their quality of life. So an 80 year old female, uh, she had a fall six weeks ago, significant back pain with change in position. So they always say mornings are the worst, getting out of bed is the worst. A lot of these patients need to wake up in the night to go and uh, go to the washroom. So it gets very difficult for them just to get out of bed in the night. Turning in bed gets very difficult. They also say that once they start walking, then they start feeling better, but that change in movement is, is difficult. If the patient does not have any leg pain, any radiculopathy, or any obviously neurological deficits, then these are the, these are the patients where I would want to do a vertebroplasty. So always get a standing x-ray. And as uh, Arjun, Arjun also pointed out, MRI with stir images is, is very, very important. Uh, it also helps you to look at other fractures. So if you see in this case, on the T2 image on the left, the above fracture may look like an old fracture, but if you see on the stir image, you see some hyper intensity in that also. So in those situations, I would rather, uh, you know, do a vertebroplasty at two levels. Now this another patient, this was a lying down x-ray. So if you see the height of the bone has reduced, but it's still rectangular. But the minute this patient stands up, you see that it's becoming more trapezoidal. So the height is collapsing and that's the reason why erect x-rays are very, very important. So this would be another indication where when I see this, even though the patient may not have significant pain, but I would probably do a prophylactic vertebroplasty to avoid this patient getting worse. Now, as this patient, she had a fracture. The next x-ray, so she was 82 year old. Uh, she was from a small rural village. Uh, obviously, she was not advised anything. She was just advised bed rest. She was on bed for almost six months. The second fracture, you see, there was worsening, but again, she didn't undergo any kind of procedure. She was just lying in bed. It was almost a year. She lost almost 20 kilo kgs of weight. She had become completely thin. But eventually, if you see she, the x-ray, you see a complete collapse of the vertebra. Now, this is what eventually happens. And if probably a vertebral plastic done at the first stage, which is a 20 minute procedure, it's a daycare procedure, patients go back home after an hour. I think this would have been avoided and she would not have to undergo a big surgery because when she came to me, she basically was a paraplegic. Her spinal cord was compressed because of which she lost motion and she was not even able to get up. So you could have probably avoided with a small procedure, we could have avoided such a big procedure. Another patient you see, uh, she came to me with, in the OPD like this. Now, again, these are the indications where we do uh, an MRI scan, you want to rule out any kind of metastasis, infections, and other uh, uh, pathological conditions. However, if you see on the MRI, which is done in the supine position, I see a lot of fluid. Now, these are the non-union cases, and these patients are going to be in pain. As you see, the height in the lying down MRI looks, looks big, but however, on the standing X-ray, you see it's completely collapsed. Now, these are the, again, situations where 
you know we can offer them even instrumentation etc but again this was a 87 year old lady uh, significant pain and if a small procedure like this can help them then i think it is very very beneficial and they can start getting out of bed quite uh, easily so this was a 101 year old lady uh, she was otherwise quite active but she was you know too much in pain the last two months she was just feeling uh, that i don't want to get out of bed and i am quite an active lady and she had a fracture which was not you know, getting united you see hyper intensive uh, hyper intensity on the stir images there's a lot of fluid collection and again a simple vitreoplasty in 101 year old uh, under local anesthesia it can give them a lot of benefit in fact for two months she was fine ultimately her relatives message saying that she had expired obviously because of her age, but she felt much less pain after surgery. So this is what is important. I don't see the age to be any factor. This is the patients who come to us are all going to be old, but I think it's a quality of life, uh, which is important in such patients. So I typically do it as a daycare. I prefer a cardiac cath lab because I feel the vision is much better. It's in prone position under local patients who are a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, I asked my anesthetist to give them some sedation. However, we keep them conscious enough so that they can move their legs during the procedure, which becomes like a real life neuromonitoring for us that we know that the needle is in place, the cement has not leaked or the spinal cord or the nerves are not affected. Uh, we inject some local anesthesia or a erector spinal block. We use Jamshidi needles. Uh, I prefer to place them from both the sides because I usually give an intra-body wash because I feel that the, the flow of the cement is much better and uh, you, know, you can delineate the fracture side very well. Uh, we keep on asking the patients to move their legs throughout the procedure uh, and then finally the cement is injected. So just quickly I'll show you that so this is how we just uh, put in the needles, confirm them in the AP and lateral once that is done. So I typically give uh, a wash like this from one side and you can see the, the, the fluid comes from the other side. Uh, and then from the other side again I give a wash and basically you can see even the change in color or the saline. And even on the, the imaging, you can start, you can see that the fracture site can be very beautifully delineated and you can see the whole, uh, the collapse which was there on the x-ray which has now opened up. And I think the filling of the cement also is, is much better. Uh, so this is the same patient's post-operative x-ray uh, in the standing position and the vertebral height is well maintained. Uh, just another patient as you see here. So initially, before putting the needle, you can just see a very small white area which shows me the fracture site but on giving the wash you can see the whole void uh, which which opens up and then you just inject the cement so this is done as a daycare procedure it's a, i think it's very minimally morbid uh, uh, patients could all these patients are going to have a lot of comorbidities diabetes ckd etc but by a 20 minute procedure under local anesthesia patients have significant relief uh, in the next half an hour they are walking they can go back home it restores the mo mobility it significantly improves the quality of life and I, and I think it's a it's a very amazing tool to get these patients up and about uh, quite quite uh, fast uh, so thank you very much